you need strength and wisdom, turn to God. He is the one who can answer our prayers. We are nothing, and God is everything. When we need help, we need to reach to God for help, because He truly does love us. God loves us so much, He sent His only begotten Son to lay down His life so that we may have eternal life. He has broken the chains we were held down by, and through Him is the only way to paradise. So trust in God. He is your best friend and creator. Praise His name daily. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God is our true best friend. Praise His name daily. So, welcome everybody here to another live stream. Just going to have a little bit of talking back and forth here while we have some people show up. I know people will start filtering now in now that they've got the notification that we're going live. Uh, so, first off, I do want to thank uh, Christian Family Man for the $20 super chat. He says, Merry Christmas, everyone. A big thank you to Chris and Family for taking the time to share this reality or really important and helpful information for the rest of us to learn from. God bless you for that. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Christian Family Man, for the support uh, that you show this channel. It's uh, amazing. So, and yeah, so we do have quite a bit of information to go through tonight. But before we do that, we always start off the streams with prayer. So, I pray to you, Father, in the name of your Son, and by the power of your Spirit, that you grant me the ability to speak clearly and boldly, to take captive any argument against your Holy Scriptures. I pray for the safety of the Christians being persecuted in Muslim lands, and I pray you take care and solve conflicts around the world. I also pray for our brothers and sisters fighting through health problems or mental health issues. I pray you reach down and heal them, Father. I also ask for those fighting cancer or any other ailments people may have. Dear God, you know us better than we know ourselves. Please give us the strength to keep striving for you. I would also like to lift up some of these strong soldiers in Christ so that you may keep blessing them and their families as well. To dear sisters, uh, Sister Hatun Tash and Daughter of Christ, uh, Brother Adam Seeker, and of course, Brother Jay Apologetics, the Biblicist Debit Ray, Brother Prophet Google, Sheikh Umad, Gopal's Ministry to the Hindus, such an important ministry. Brothers Christian Prince, Rob Christian, Al Fadi, David Wood, Jay Smith, Sam Shimon, AK Sniper, Dr. Tony Costa, Steve Hussein, Reverend Anthony Rogers, Brother Ask Truth Apologetics, Islam Critiqued, Lloyd DeJong, Somali Christian TV, The Cross and the Crescent, Sister Uzma Khan, Bob the Builder, Sister Kay of London, and of course, our dear brother, Ask the Kafir, and any other polemis or apologist not specifically mentioned here. I also ask God that you watch over the women giving birth this year and early next year, and may their children love you, Lord. I also ask that if it be in your will, God, that this ministry goes full time for your glory. Lastly, I ask that through this stream today, just one comes to know the knowledge of the true triune God. I ask this in the name of your glorious Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So let's jump right on in there. First off, I always give thanks to my Lord and Savior for providing me the ability to have an online ministry so that we can um, attack these arguments and bring glory to the scriptures. Um, I also want to thank my wife and my children uh, for providing me the time, uh, the ability, and everything else they provide me with so that I'm able to do this online ministry as well. I have a very godly wife and some very wonderful children. Well, you know, most of the time anyway, they are children, but they're very good children. And last uh, last but definitely not least, thank you to all you people out there. Without you guys out there, I'd just simply be talking to myself. Um, so it's wonderful to have, I think we have around 25 people in here right now, which is great. Um, hopefully the numbers will grow because we have some inst interesting information so thank all of you for showing up ask the kafir show god bless you brother good to see you june villagas uh hopefully i didn't uh, murder that name god bless you uh sister dragon 
how you doing, sister? God bless you. I hope everything's going well uh, with you, sister. I'm very pleased to have you here, uh, Dragon and Chloe and a few of the, of the admins that admin for me. Basically, admin for all of YouTube, uh, Christian apologists at this point in time. Uh, there's not... There's probably not too many Christian apologists that they don't already moderate for anyways. Uh, but thank you all. Thank you for, to the moderators for everything that you do um, in running the chat. And always, um, if there's any arguments into the chat, it's the, the moderators have the last decision. I trust my moderators. Chloe Waked, God bless you, sister. God bless you, Christian family man. Sergeant Grinch, brother Ben from Ben Beal's Corner. God bless you, brother. Good to see you. Um, and we have a few more in here. Mel J, how are you doing, sister? God bless you as well. Um, and I think there was Radical Moderate. Yeah, I did see you there as well. God bless you, brother. And it's weird because Radical Moderate normally doesn't show up at the start of my live streams. It's usually about the last 10 minutes of the live stream. Uh, so thank you very much for showing up on time today, Radical Moderate. Good job, brother. Danny Davis, God bless you, brother. I just pray that the God keeps blessing you, brother, and gives you the ability to not have to work as hard because, man, you are a hard worker. Um, you've had some tragedies and you've overcome them as a godly man and i just keep the keep uh, praying that god grant you the ability for that uh for the easy relaxation hopefully soon and that you won't be uh working and maybe you can just be supervising and, and pricing out jobs and tatiana god bless you dear sister good uh thank you so much for showing up and we have the cross and the crescent in the in the chat but not just in the chat we have the man the myth the legend eric how you doing sir Myth, definitely a myth. I I got some great news today. Uh, Jason, you know Jay Smith. He does uh, uh, the, the those classes for Veritas University, and I was in the process of downloading and printing a lot of the handouts that he has. And one of the handouts that he that he that he had was the top fifty uh, Christian apologetic sites dedicated to confronting Islam. Now, the top fifty. I was 49. Ooh, nice. Ooh, and, and Chris, you were number, I don't know. I was just so excited to be on the list that I couldn't, I'm going to find, I'm going to look, I'm going to find it. And then, uh, All right. I'm going to tell you where you are. All right. Well, while you're doing that, I just want to say hi to T-Dog. Good to see you there. Your question. And of course, my wife that's in the chat. Uh, God bless you, my wife. You're always helping me out. X, Y, and Z. Good to see you. Darcy Campbell. God bless you, sister. Benny Yosef, how you doing? Um, and dear sister Connie uh, out there, God bless you, dear sister. All the support that you do show the channel. And Gob, how you doing? God bless you all. Good to see everybody this evening. Now, the only last thing that I would have left to say here is the only support that I would ask from anybody on this channel is if you do like the videos go ahead and hit that like button and if you haven't hit the subscribe button go ahead and do that turn on that bell for all notifications so you know when i'm coming live in the future and if the lord does bless it upon your heart to uh help out the online ministry we do have the super chats and the super stickers and we also have you can join a member here on youtube and you can join to be a member on our patreon as well and we have Sister Slam. How you doing, Sister? God bless you. Good to see you. Um, so, Eric, did you find me on the list? 45. Oh, I got you by four, brother. Got you by four. All right. So, at least I'm on the list, too. Right on. <laughs> right, yeah, you're on the list. Number one, of course, is uh, is David Wood. What do you mean? Number two, Sokol Films. Number three, James White. Number four. Dr. Oakley, that's James White, also is number five. So four or five. Um, let me see where Sam. Sam ought to be. Sam's number 10. And uh, Islam Critiques, number 19. Because it, uh, it goes by the number of views that you that people get. Yeah. Um, right on. Jihad Watch right, okay. is number 15. Um, so there's all, there's, I'll, I'll send you the list. Right on, right it's on. Kind of, it's kind of cool to see. But I mean, I, I, I'm sitting there going down the list. I'm like, no, 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 no. And at 49, at least I'm beating, um, who is this guy? Mike, Mark Dwyer. Oh, well. All right. <laughs> so he's so, got to be somebody's last. 
All right. So in tonight's show, I'm going to go through the logical problem of the Trinity and possibly a logical problem with the Quran. Well, we know that there's quite a few logical problems with the Quran, but we'll limit it just to maybe a couple this evening, unless Eric wants to throw in a couple while we're going through there. But, 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 before we get into that, something that has been brought to my attention in the in the uh, last few days, that there's been a certain doxer back at it again. He's trying to defame and, and dis, discredit people because of their points of view. Now, I've always been told that when Muslims are trying to get you canceled, trying to have Muslims stay away from you and debate and things to this nature, there's a reason for it. Now, what I'm going to play here is something that's going to be very, very disgusting. Um, and I'm going to address everything here. Uh, so thank Oh, thank you so much, dear Sister Connie. Uh, God bless you so much for all your support that you do, uh, all the love that you sh uh, show this channel, especially me and my wife as well, even on our Facebook accounts. Uh, so thank you so much, Sister. God bless you uh, as well. All right. So what we're going to do is I got a video that I'm going to bring up here, and I'm going to put it on full screen here. And I'm going to turn it up quite a bit because I want to make sure that we hear the sound. All right. So everybody listen to what this troll has to say. So I just want to give people context for, for what's going on. There was a discussion on Clubhouse. The Muslims were having a debate with a friend of mine. They weren't doing so well. So they called for backup. Who's their backup? Jake, the Muslim metamagician, or uh, metaphysician, sorry, metaphysician, and uh, and Ajaz. So that's their backup. Uh, I, I, you know, he's the doctor. But he's no hashtag meta uh, magician. Known for that, but that's their backup, and this is what happened when they came in. Let me know if you sisters and yeah. uh, everyone in the audience can hear. Let's see. Yeah, but. But brother Jake, just to clarify, because I don't know what has happened or why this conversation is occurring. Um, I, I just entered to have a quick conversation. I think his name is Milos or Milos. I don't want to get his name wrong. Yeah, he's um, not genuine, but, brother. That's the point. You, I, I, I would just point out to you, though, that I don't think you should engage with the uh, the, the Chris Claus type of individual. You are intellect. Yeah, kindly, this guy's Chris Claus Jr. No, no. Well, the problem is, and I want to state this publicly, is that I find it very problematic that, you know, if anyone supports this individual known as Chris Claus, he has made racist statements towards African people, particularly my brother, Shadi Lewis, for which he had to acknowledge after three years of harassment and bullying that he got the wrong person. Uh, secondly, um, Chris Claus has claimed he's used the title doctor in the past. And it's only when I questioned him privately that I come to that he did not have a PhD. He was simply using it as a title. So I don't mean to get personal, and I don't want us to get personal. Yeah, and who's this I, guy asking? All right, so this is where Jay pauses the video. So here we have, uh, before I get into this, I do want to thank, I did see that come up, and I didn't uh, notice, I didn't say it during the video, but thank you so much, dear sister. God bless you. Uh, thank you for the support. So we have the Islamic doxer saying that I'm racist and that Muslims aren't, shouldn't be uh, uh, discussing things with me uh, because I am racist. So in this first part, you hear Ijaz say that no Muslim should debate me because I'm a racist towards Africans and that I have said racist comments to his brother Shadid Lewis. Maybe the racist doxer forgot, but I didn't. He's the one that actually used a racist comment towards a Hispanic brother. And it's all over the Internet. I'm not sure. Again, I'm not sure if the Islamic racist docs or forgot what he has done, but nobody else has. So simply by saying 
I'm a racist doesn't get rid of what you've already done, you racist doxer. So let me start off by saying yes. I did make a mistake about six or seven years ago. I accused Shadid Lewis of being a racist because he had opened a room titled The White Devils in Christianity. I was wrong because it turned out he was not the owner of the room, but was just in there debating as a moderator. Either way, since I publicly stated that Shadid was a racist because of the title of the room, I went back live and apologized for making that false accusation against someone. So that's why I went back live, and it wasn't three years later. It was roughly about 30 days to, to 60 days later. Apparently, he doesn't know time much either. So I apologize for making false accusations against somebody. I did not and would not apologize for being racist because I was not racist. I accused him of being racist because of a title of a room. That's not me being racist or, or calling him a racist name by any uh, by any forms of the shape. It's just I made a, a bad judgment. I, I made a wrong accusation. So I apologized for that accusation. I did not apologize for being racist because it was not a racist comment. Now, the racist doxer was wrong on that account. But is there any evidence of him being racist? Hmm. Let's just wonder about that for a second. Now, also, he says that I claim to be a fake PhD student. This is actually rather hilarious. Okay, at one time, there was a group of four of us on Pal Talk, And what we did is we added the DR to the start of our nickname. It was a laugh because Muslims would claim that they were scholars without any information or anything to support their assertions. So... What I told people is that I received my PhD in refutation and exposure of the Islamic argumentation, which I obtained from Pal Talk U. I don't think there's anybody out there that think that would think that that is a legitimate PhD of any sort anywhere on this earth, but yet. This Islamic doxer seems to think, oh, this is information. We can get that out there and we can we can shut this man down. We can't have Muslims go into his channel. We've got to stop that. I think it's just disgusting that somebody like him has to come up with these type of lies to try to discredit somebody because of how bad they make them look, right? Now. Whew. Let me keep going here. Now, anyone with a half a brain would know that a person is joking when they say something like, I received my PhD for refutation and exposure of the Islamic argumentation from Pal Talk U. But to the Islamic doxer and the racist, this means something else. I love how this troll has no idea what he's talking about, which is why he tries to lie to have Muslims not debate me. Truly the Islamic doc truly Islamic doxer, are you that scared that I would make your buddy Jake and his puppet boy look that bad? Now, I did make somebody look bad though, and it was a Kilanqua, and it was a debate that he actually hosted. Now, this is what I believe. It all stems back to Ejaz was mad that I wouldn't debate him after I made Akil Anqua look bad. In the debate I had with Akil. I used a debate strategy um, that wasn't used before at that time, and they really didn't like it. And me and a few of the friends that come up with it, we we called it the M and M approach. Now, a lot of people may not understand the 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 phrasing for that, but we called it the M and M approach. So I took everything that he was going to say, like Christians say God can't die, yet Jesus died on the cross, and then I would say. Christians say God is all-knowing, and Jesus didn't know the hour. And I'd list off like 12 of them. And then I refuted all 12 of them with Scripture and then ended off my opening by saying, 
Now tell us I have something I haven't already refuted. <laughs> and so his first words were like, he, he's trying to do damage control in his opening statement. <laughs> and then he proceeded basically to say the exact same thing that I've already refuted in my opening statement. So it was a very bad, bad debate for Akil Ankwa. So after that, the doxer tried for months to debate me. And I turned him down because I don't like how he debates. Right. So I just didn't want to debate him. So seven years ago, after that, him and Akil and Mustafa did, or sorry, seven years ago, right after that debate, um, the doxer Akil Ankwa and Mustafa with Shadid Lewis did a video telling Muslims not to associate with me. And it looks like he's trying to do it again to save Jake and his little puppet boy. Is there anything that you'd like to say? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, what, I, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to give people an idea of why I call um, Ijaz Ahmad Jinabrik. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't realize that uh, Jinabrik here, let me just put it up here, is a uh, is a character in Narnia. Now you can, there we go. Um, I don't know. And the thing about Jinabrick and Ijaz, you know, maybe this is just an older form of Ijaz. Ijaz is, when we talk about, you know, he looks like a Narnia character. Uh, yeah, you, you can get there real quick. But the thing with Ijaz is that he's he's all about like, I don't know. Here, hold on, put this one up here. Oh. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is about how tall he is. So when we start talking about um, having man, issues or issues about you know oops there we go sorry about that me... yeah, i just i don't like looking at his face so i try to get I, it yeah i'm sorry to have to discuss to you but uh and also when he, you know if he's going to talk about somebody can you share my screen again about somebody saying that they're a phd student uh his favorite imam out of houston made this uh claim a couple years ago um he says i'm i'm working towards my doctorate and the guy didn't even have a uh, one year of college yet, I think. So, you know, these guys, they, they, this is, this is what people who uh, want to project their own shortcomings onto other people do. It's propaganda. This is how propaganda is used. And this is exactly what he's doing. Um, you know, to even, you know, give some time to respond to what this guy is saying, because we all know that he has this racist tendencies. He called, um, Ariel Gonzalez, a very pejorative word. He called his sister, um, you know, and so this guy to, to, to take anything that he says with any type of seriousness or to, you know, to, to uh, think of it as some type of criticism. Well, what do we do? We just say, well, just go to the source. And the source here happens to be Ginebrick, a little Narnia creature that somehow got out of the wardrobe and found his way into our our human existence here. This I know. Come back. Uh, and I wasn't really going to address much of it, but um, I did see that uh, Sister Hatun uh, wanted to bring it up just to point out what uh, Muslims are trying to do to dis uh, deplatform uh, Christians. Um, and this is just another attempt that uh, um, I'm not going to say his name like you did because I'll never mention that guy's name on my channel. Other people can, but I just won't myself. I call him the Islamic doxer. Um, but anyways, other than that, uh, Chris, so yeah, I just, can you can you show my screen again? This this is yep. this is his campaign. If I were to launch a campaign to raise funds to help remove those false claims by missionaries, which may get their two tube channels removed, banned due to defamation, how many of you would help me with that? And look at him, Allah Akbar. Look at this. $2,200. Who's giving this guy money? For God's sake, what an idiot. Well, it's, it's because <laughs> you have to take to give this guy money to dox it's, people. It's because Muslims, that's they will pay for that. To try to get that <laughs> out so there. Stupid. And thank you uh, again, dear sister Connie. Thank you so much for your support. God bless you, dear sister. Um, and, and that's the whole, and that's the brutal thing about it right now, um, is that they will go to any length to prevent people from debating or or learning anything um, they go to as far as lying now and that's not even the worst the worst is yet to come people 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get this video, this part of the video back up here. Now, I want you to listen to what this guy says this time about um, not just me. So these are these are the face. These are the face of the faces of Islamic defenders in the West, in the English speaking world. These guys are very popular amongst Muslims. This is the face of Islam in the West. These are their debaters. These are their people who argue on behalf of their faith. Look what they have to do. They have to lie about people. And we're going to see what continues on. It gets worse. There you go. Here, is this Chris but Carlson's I just, buddy or what? I just want to make it clear, though, that I do not endorse the actions of others, nor do I encourage engaging in such behavior. So I have nothing. Oh, yeah. He, he doesn't engage in any such behavior like that. Not not that guy, eh? To do with this, I'm independent of this. And I hope yeah, you guys but, understand that. Yeah, you, you have nothing to do with this. You have nothing right? to do with um, this. Oh, yeah. He, even, his, even his boyfriend, Jake, there. You've got nothing to do with this, Mr. Islamic Doxer. It has nothing to do with you, even though you're the one that's lying about somebody publicly trying to get personal with them, and, and it's going to get a lot worse. But no, no, you don't have anything to do with it. Just keep stroking that ego, Jake. Just keep stroking that ego, buddy. So I'm just going to yeah, listen right. in the meantime. I know I'm a moderator, but I'm not controlling the room. You guys can continue. Just yeah, you know, Ami, I have to hijack you your room because this guy's been slandering me. Now, I want to know, Mr. Ask, are you Ask Truth Apologetics? Is that you, Chris Pauses, buddy? Yes, that's me. Okay, so th we got another joker here. Another guy who's not genuine. So... So basically, I just want to say, I just want to quickly say, I won't tolerate any slander against Jake under any circumstances. So it's up to him. He can control. Oh yeah, no, guys, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to slander Jake. Not, not poor, poor Jake. Not, not after the Islamic doxer who threatens Christians' lives just come up and lied and was personal and, and was rude and everything else about people and and then jake is being the same way to brother ask truth apologetics but no 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 slander against against J as against jake uh poor boy control the room however you want so jake you just decide what you want to do bro well well i'm just telling you because brother i'm just i just came in the room and he jazz you just made that statement but if you've watched my videos recently I've the videos that I'm reviewing, yes. uh, okay, I, here's I, my point. Yeah, that guy, no, but hold on a second. The guy who was doing live streams with Chris Claus was the guy who was just sitting here right here in this room. That I just moved to the audience. I, I, I wasn't. Okay. So therefore, I'm sorry, but if you do live streams with me, people, Eric, you're doomed. You're doing a live stream with me. People that do live streams with me now are immediately kicked and banned from any room that Jake is in. You okay, see how I better, scared I better they go are. then, Chris. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm going to have to go <laughs> then. I, hold on. Let me run away. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Like, <laughs> no. who, like I, I keep laughing because I, I, I look in the mirror and I'm like, who am I? I? I'm nothing to God, right? But to these men, I'm that scared. Like, I'm that scary to them. For some reason... Somebody that's even on my live stream must be banned and not allowed to talk on these channels. Not sure if uh, Jake is uh, very firm in what he believes in. And Jake, if you're out there, I've got no problem debating you and mopping the floor with you at any point in time. And I'll even do it on your channel. I don't care where it is. But I know that you're too scared to do that, so... Away, brother Jacob. I know, um, but a, that's why I I, that's it. why I came. That's why I came in because uh, I have to check on my brothers and let you guys know what's going on here. Yeah, and it's just uh, to be I, oh yeah, they wouldn't have known anything without Big Brother Jake coming in to save the day. I, I, Jake, just to be clear, Jake, you're not saying though that you know we are. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. So check out this disclaimer. <laughs> Listen to what he says here. He's making a disclaimer now afraid of conversation with these people or that they can refuse us in any way 
the fraud is it's their dishonest tactics and behavior just to be clear is that the yes, understanding these are, are dishonest tactics that's what he's claiming i mean this is like upside down world or something he's <laughs> like this is projection it's like the textbook definition of projection he's saying that he he's like by the way guys this doesn't this doesn't mean that we're afraid to engage with them or we think that they can refute us you know, we just don't want to engage with their dishonest tactics. That's exactly what you're doing. That's exactly what you do. You and Jake engage in dishonest tactics. No one was slandering Jake. The guy was having a debate with a Muslim, and uh, Jake came in, interrupted the conversation, kicked the guy out, basically, moved him off the stage so he couldn't talk anymore. And he went on this whole rant about how this guy slandered him, whatever, whatever. Complete lies. He never slandered him at all. It just uh, the lie. It's a lie. And then a guy comes up, lies about Chris Kloss. He's about to lie about um, me and others as well. And uh, yeah, so I don't know if you sisters have anything you want to say about that. Uh, it just breaks my heart that oh, poor people, their feelings are being hurt. When it, when they can't refute you, they, they really have to only resort to these tactics. They have to, they can't answer. DCCI, they can't answer Jai, they can't answer Chris, so they make it it's ad hominem. They pretend like it's an ad hominem towards them, but no one said anything. Poor people, poor people, they are just hurt little children, or someone needs to give them a like, baby bottle or something. Um, anyway, let's continue, brother. All right, uh, Sister John of Christ, you okay? Uh, yes, continue, or are you okay? I'm okay, you can continue. Okay, all right. All right, now, before I continue with this video, I'm bracing everybody now because this is the most disgusting part, right? Now, Jake and his little sidekick, um, are, I'm not sure why they would associate with somebody like this. So I, His I'm little sidekick is right, Chris, his little sidekick. Yeah, well, I'm not talking about uh, the Islamic doctor as Jake's little sidekick. There's another um, uh, ex-atheist that turned Muslim. Um, that is uh, Jake's little uh, protege, his his little buddy, his little student. Um, I don't understand why those two people are are dealing with somebody like the Islamic doctor, who is actually racist, proven, who actually threatened a Christian's life, said that he was going to take uh, some time off, you know, go back to the drawing board, see where he went wrong, try to correct his th thinking mentally and things to this nature. And five days later, he was laughing and carrying on on a live stream. So it doesn't really show that he has much, um, much of anything, really. So thank you so much, dear sister Connie. God bless you. God bless you, sister. Thank you so much. Amen. Um, so I'm going to continue, but get ready because what's coming up is probably the worst. Okay. Hey, Jay, just, just, to let, Jay, just to let you know, bro, you may not be, but you are like an um, a admin in this group now. You can use this room whenever you want as well. I, don't know. I truly think this guy that's talking to Jake that doesn't want any slander, I think he's gay. I truly think that he really likes him and that he really, really likes him. Because he's all about Jake right now. Right? Oh, Jake, you, now you're a moderator in this room, man. You come in whenever you want. You can talk to whoever you want. You can ban whoever you want now. Like, it's, it's borderline, borderline-ish, right? Thank you, dear sister. God bless you. Thank you so much for your love and support. Um, amen, amen. It's just amazing on how crazy we drive these Muslims. Well, Let's Rad, call, oh. Rad, call, Rad calls them lemmies. Let me do this for you. Let me do that for <laughs> yeah. you. So this is what this guy would be a lemmy. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Yeah, I this. know. I I know. But I'm I, the reason why I just called out this guy is because he's sitting in the speaker uh, section, and Ijaz just called out Mr. Santa Claus, and I, I didn't. I don't think that Ijaz was aware of the fact that the guy who was sitting here is actually buddy buddy with him, and was in the street that I was refuting. Well, there you go. If you're buddy buddy with me, you get kicked from Jake's room because he's scared. It was like he's probably recording us right now. now. Yeah, that's why I started recording exactly. the moment that he went to the room. You heard the voice of that other protege, the, the, the other troll, 
that other ex atheist turned Muslim. That that was him. I don't want to mention his name because he's not really important. Uh, because I I rather go after his teacher Jake instead of him. Yeah, because no, no, just to point out, Jay Kuri, um, who goes by JJ Jai Jai on this application. Yeah, Jai he Apologetics. Often, yeah, he off yeah, Jay Kuri particularly. Just to be clear, if you're under eighteen and he sends you sexual messages, please let me know because we are uh, we have actually reported him and some of his colleagues to send in messages to minors. Um, they randomly bring up the topic of, of Aisha Rajalana with minors, and I don't know why it's systematic. So if you're under the age of 18 and you've received messages like these, please let me know because we are concerned about the content that they are given towards younger children. And Chris Claus is involved in this. I don't know why you do it. So, lastly, <sighs> joke accuses Jay Apologetics of being a pedophile. And notice he stated that anyone 18 years or under should not be talking about Aisha or how young she was when she was raped by an a ra Arabic man who claimed to be a prophet. He even tries to place me in this category. Now... I think if anyone with a logical brain analyzes these false claims by the Islamic doxer, we know that they are all false. I'm not going to speak for Jay because he already did last night on DCCI Ministries in where he outright denied the accusations made about him. And which, let's be honest, out of any Christian out there at all, Using the topics like this, we all know Jay is not that person. Out of any Christian he could have named, he names Jay. It, like, it just don't make sense at that point. Like, Now, I'm going to state on my own behalf that it is definitely, completely false. I have five children and a grandchild, and I have never talked to any other woman in any sexual manner unless it is my wife. I am a Christian man who is very happily married. And it will always be that way until the day that I die. Now, in saying that, though, let's just analyze what this doctor has said. If a man talks to an 18 or under female about Aisha being six when she was married and then nine when raped, I will, I would say, and I do say rape because she did not have the proper mental progression to make that decision, right? Which is why we don't allow nine-year-olds to make that decision today. Also, if it is so bad to talk about Muhammad and Aisha, like, and, and it's so bad that and I didn't play the rest of it, but he says that he's actually collected affidavits and sent them to the FBI. If they're this bad that you have to collect affidavits about the age of Aisha and send them to the FBI because <laughs> you're concerned, then how are you a Muslim if it's that disgusting? Truly. Now, just to finish off here, and I'll let you jump in here, Eric, because I know you probably got a lot to say. Just to finish off with the doxer, he lied about everything. And technically, him and his buddy Mustafa Ahmed probably should have been arrested for what they've actually done. The docs are doxxed and called a Hispanic brother a racial, a racial slur. He also called his mother out of her name by calling her a W-H-O-R-E, and I won't say that word, and then proceeded to threaten his life. And then uh, Mustafa Ahmed, his buddy, long-time brother, said some pretty disgusting things about a Christian child, which I'm not going to be posting today, but I have made a video on it in my channel. It's a, a dear brother of ours' uh, family, and he had uh, two daughters and a little boy, and uh, Mustafa Ahmed was making some very disgusting remarks um, about those two young ladies and his son. So... Out of anybody that should have been arrested, it should have been him and his buddy Mustafa Ahmed. Yet, these are the people that Jake 
the meta magician oh wait meta physician you know jake the fake that's what him and his little uh protege his, his little buddy his, his little student these are the people that they hang out with these are the people that they meant that they're being mentored by these are the people that are teaching them their dawa thank you so much dear connie god bless you sister and that's right give some bottles for that little baby <laughs> All right. So what do you got to say there, Eric? I got I got four things here. Let's start with Mustafa, who I've nicknamed Jabba the Hutt. Um, here you have a guy in his probably early 30s that's easily 80 pounds overweight, thinks of himself as a pretty boy, puts all these little uh, pictures of himself uh, on Facebook. And you can tell there's there's a, there's a lot of self-esteem issues there that, that he tries to compensate for. But the guy's got a dirty mind. It, uh, he swims in the sewer with Ajaz um, and a couple other people that uh, we're very familiar with. And some of the comments that he made, he sexualizes everything. So this just tells you the level of perversion. This is what Muhammad does to people's mind. This is what happens when, you know, you, you, you spend your life with a nine-year-old girl until she's 18 and you do all the things that you did to her and it 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 enables a sense of liberty for these guys to engage in any type of perversion activity because if their standard is to do that uh to a little girl and that's as bad as it can, you know it doesn't get any better than that uh these people are just sick second thing he's going to report you to the fbi I'm trying to figure out what type of jurisdiction that the FBI has in Canada. I just, I'm just, I don't, that doesn't, I mean, these guys aren't, we're not crediting them with being bright to begin with, but come on. I mean, you can't really be that stupid. Um, this is what uh, these, these guys do. They will, and this is what I, I would tell you to to be aware of, is that they, they can, and I've had uh, our our other scumbag friend, the cowardly line of Dawa, make fake accounts and send himself fake emails from me outing his phone number or uh, pretending to be me on Facebook using pictures that he's gotten from my Facebook pages and creates his own stuff and then reports me for impersonating him. This is what they do. So I, I would be careful with that, but this is exactly, this is exactly the type of level that they would stoop to. Now, think about why they would do that. Would they do that to somebody that has, that's not having any impact at all on Muhammad, having in, any impact at all on Islam, having any impact at all on their attempts at Dawah? No, they'd leave them alone. But the excuse me, the reason why they're coming after you is because you're being effectual. You know you're right over the target when you catch the most flack. And this is exactly what uh, they do. They, they, they act like the scumbags that they are, because that's exactly what they are. And this is exactly like the, the, what, what scumbags do. And he's demonstrated that by calling Ariel Gonzalez is what he did, talking about his mother the way he has, using those, the, 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 the type of language that he does on a live stream. This is the type of person that that we're dealing with. He's dishonest and he has a lot of shortcomings. Let's just put it that way. Agreed, agreed, agreed. So with saying that, I know that the Islamic doxer is upset because I didn't want to debate him seven years ago. I destroyed his boy back then and he sees... Uh, he sees this going to happen again. And I, I see that he's trying to save Jake and he's trying to save all these Muslims um, from leaving Islam. But Ija, or sorry, I almost said it. I almost finished saying it. The Islamic doxer, you are a disgusting individual and somebody like you needs to be in jail for the things that you've done. Now. Chris, let's say just one more thing about that. Yeah. If he tries to do stuff like that, this is something that where, where you just you don't ever get around me. If you try to do something like that, I mean, you don't ever public do not ever get around me publicly. If you're going to try to if you do something like that to me, if you were going to try to. And if you have to frame somebody that way to make them look like they, they engage in the same type of behavior that their pedophile prophet did. 
you, maybe you, you know you need to you need to to reevaluate who who you're following. But if they did do that, he better have a good dental plan. That's all I would say about it. Yeah, uh, and and all I'm saying is I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go to the uh, authorities over the slander right now. Um, but if it keeps up, I may have to. Right, because this is just outright slander towards me and, and Jay. Like, this is not any of it's true at all. Like, he's trying to get people to donate on his little GoFundMe, whatever, to try to attack these Christians that are putting up these videos and slandering me. But we're not slandering him. He's slandering himself in those videos. It's his voice being racist. It's his voice calling this guy's mother a W-H-O-R-E. It's his voice uh, doxing this guy's sister. And it's his voice doing all of this. So we're not doing anything to him. It's him doing it to himself. And I think it's just funny that the these Muslims, like Jake the fake, the, Mus the Muslim meta magician there, um, and his little buddy there, the ex-atheist come Muslim, his, his little protege, his little lap partner that's always with him. Lemming. I think that he yeah, is a little lemming um, that's always with him. But that's not the only reason why we wanted to have this show today. And now I think we had our dear sister. Woo and thank you so much, Connie. God bless you, dear sister. Thank you so much. And so this isn't the only thing that I wanted to talk about tonight. So, do you have any thoughts on the logical problem of the Trinity, Eric? Uh, other than the fact that Muhammad didn't understand what the Trinity was, um, when, when you look at the Islamic sources, you look at the Quran, you look at the Hadith, you look at the Sira, uh, they believed, Muhammad taught, and the earliest Muslims believed that the Trinity was uh, Allah, Jesus and Mary and the their understanding of the Trinity immediately caused them to consider Christians as polytheists which would lead to all kinds of other um, a, a, other accusations and other theological problems but as far as their understanding of the Trinity of course there's they they reduce God to a mathematical equation of one plus one plus one equals one um, and then they, then they, they started to talk about, well, how can God talk to himself? Uh, how can he pray to himself? How can God die? You know, all of these things about the Trinity are clearly wrong. If they would, if they would become familiar, if they would just spend a little bit of time, uh, becoming familiar with, um, cr Christian theology and the Christian understanding of the, of the Trinity, but they choose not to. And the reason why they choose not to is because they, they're forced into a box, by an eight seventh or a seventh century uh camel herder amen that was a, that's one way to look at it and another way to look at it is now when we talk about the logical problem of the trinity what we are essentially doing is defining what god's being is by nature according to our finite understanding of god now many theologians would say that we must be able to conceive and know what God's being is and nature is, and that if we cannot, then this God is illogical and therefore must be rejected. So, but the problem with this type of thinking is it has some presuppositions, right? Now, one of the presuppositions that I can come up with here would be that we would know that we would have to know with 100% certainty the nature and the being of God. The second presupposition that would arrive is that God's nature and being, which are outside of time and space, are identical to terms inside of time and space. Now, the third uh, presupposition that people would have in this is that general revelation is all that is needed to understand the nature and the being of God. And to, and to me, we've given these three pre, uh, presuppositions when trying to come up with this type of argumentation, it doesn't really hold very well. Now, 
but let's just ask ourselves, should a Muslim even be using this type of argument? Like, I could see if an atheist was to propose this question, but from a Muslim? Before I exp uh, Now, before I explain why this isn't an issue in Christianity, I'm going to explain why a Muslim cannot use this argument while holding an Islamic belief. I'm going to go to the Quran. In Surah 7, verse 143, for anybody out there following and, and taking notes, it's Surah 7, verse 143. And when Moses arrived at our appointed time and his Lord spoke to him, he said, My Lord, show me yourself that I may look at you. Allah said, You will not see me, but look at the mountain. If it should remain in place, then you will see me. But when the Lord appeared to the mountain, he rendered it level and Moses fell unconscious. And then woke, and when he woke, he said, Exalted are you. I have repented to you and I am the first of the believers. And then it says in Surah 18, verse 110, Surah 18, verse 110, it says, Say I'm only a man like you to whom has been revealed that your God is one God. So who, whoever would hope for the meeting with his Lord, let him do righteous work and not associate in the worship of his Lord anyone else. And then the last verse I want to quote here is in Surah 112, verse 4. Surah 112, verse 4 says, Nor is there to him any equivalent. So there is nothing that is equivalent to their God. These chronic verses say that no one has ever no one has ever saw God nor can see God and that there is no equivalent to their God. Wait, doesn't Jake try to equivocate God to human understanding and a human concept? Doesn't this borderline on shirk? But let's leave that for now. In the Islamic understanding, sorry, in the Islamic understanding is that God is simply one. That's it. That's all. And when you ask them about it, right? They say, Tawheed, man, Tawheed. Like this is their lifeline to avoid explaining the oneness of the Islamic God. Now in Islam, they claim Tawheed means oneness, but it technically means unification. So my first question to a Muslim would be, why is Tawheed defined uni unification, but you say oneness? Does Unification now mean oneness to you Muslims? Also, Muslims act like there is has been no issue in any Islamic thought because of this. Muslims a long time ago realized that when you said Allah is one in every sense, it's hard to admit that he has multiple attributes. Muslims in today in academia are still figuring this out. So for a Muslim to say that uh, Tawheed is not a big problem. They are lying drastically. Now, one other issue I see in Islam is a certain verse which says, Do they not then meditate on the Quran? And if it were from any if it were from any other than Allah, they would have found many uh, errors in it, basically. This is Surah 482. Surah 482. So basically because, so this verse says that a Muslim should know and be firm and that their Quran must be from God because it has no errors or discrepancies or many errors or discrepancies. How logical is this statement? Though coming from an all-knowing being, right? Let me explain. Imagine everyone that people are criticizing someone who claims to be a prophet. And then he says, I just received a new revelation, and my Allah told me that if my revelation was fake, there would be lots of errors in it. So my rev revelation has to be from God. There it is. Now, I do just want to note before we move on that Allah was not very confident in Muhammad because of the word many. So if there is one or two errors, that's okay, right? It can still be from God because it doesn't have many errors in it. Yep, that makes sense to me. What about you guys out there? Does that make sense to you guys too? <laughs> I put that verse up on the screen for you, Chris. Oh, I got to have to put it up here then. 
Bam, there you are. Thank you so much, Eric. All right, we'll go back over here. So, moving on, though. So, in the chronic verse, we have what's called a conditional statement. Let's look at it a little bit more carefully, though. So, it basically says the Quran, if the Quran cannot be from God, it would have many errors, which sounds kind of weird. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to word it as a positive. So, I'm going to word it as Quran has to be from God because there is not many errors. So, for us to falsify this statement, we would simply have to provide truths that are not from Allah. Let's see how long this is going to take to logically show how stupid their Quran truly is. Let's just say a fifth grade history book. It would contain zero errors and it is not from God. So therefore, it would defeat the statement from their God and show how illogical Islam truly is. Because their Quran claims that their book comes from God because there's not many errors. So therefore, it's presupposing that only God can reveal something without error. This is why this statement is defeated. And an all-knowing God, or an even a half-logical God, would have already known that to begin with. So I'm not sure why these guys that deal in logic and metaphysics um, are actually Muslim in the first place. Now, so I've just pointed out that a Muslim cannot nor, nor see his God and cannot equate him with anything in creation. Yet Jake believes a Muslim should be able to equate his God to creation. Mm. There's a word for that, people. It's called shirk. I also point out a logical problem with a statement in the Quran. Now, before I, I move on, I want to talk about a verse that I posted above. Now, before I read it again, I want everyone into the chat to put their BS detector ears on for this one. What I'd like to do is analyze a different verse that I posted above. And I just want you to see how illogical that this verse actually sounds. All right. Everybody's got those BS ears on. All right. Get ready to detect it. And this is, comes from Surah 7, verse 143. And when Moses arrived at our appointed time, and his Lord spoke to him, he said, My Lord, show me yourself that I may look at you. Allah said, You will not see me, but look at the mountain. If it should remain in place, then you will see me. But when his Lord appeared to the mountain, it rendered it level, and Moses fell unconscious. And when he woke up, he said, Exalted are you. I have repented to you, and I am the first of believers. Now, everybody with their BS goggles and their BS ears on, what would be the first point of BS that we could pull out of that statement from Momo in the Quran? The first thing that I would pull out is something that's at the bottom of that verse and something that's at the top of that verse. So it says, down at the bottom, Moses confesses and he says, I have repented to you and now I am the first of the believers. Is he really though? Is he really the first of the believers? Ah, there we go, people. That's what I was thinking. I didn't think. I didn't I think Abraham. Moses. I'm sorry, Chris, but I, I thought Abraham. Or wait, no. Keep going. Noah. No. Um, Almost. Adam. Amen. They believe that it is Adam that was the first believer. Oops. I hate when that happens. Ouch. Now, there's also another one in here. Another one. There's another part for this little BS part from this 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 little verse now another part here is when allah went to the mountain what happened it rendered it level and moses fell unconscious so you can imagine they're standing beside this mountain right and allah goes up to the mountain and he levels it what does that mean well the mountain 
was very tall and all of a sudden crashed down to the ground. Must have been like a big earthquake and everything come down. Where'd all those rocks go? How did that not kill Moses? It, it, it didn't kill him, people. It just literally knocked him out. He was just unconscious over it. Moses must have been a tough man, Eric. Back in the day, you can stand beside a mountain. That thing can crumble and it can come to the ground. It sounds like he was stoned. Unconscious. I said, ah, it sounds ah, like he was stoned, yeah. Yeah, you, you, got, you got it. Right. One of the two. You got it right there. We just proved Allah just stoned Moses. There we have it, people. There we have it. In Surah 7, verse 143, Allah has stoned Mo- uh, Moses. But and the problem is, is that you can, you can understand, probably, maybe, maybe you could understand, people 1,400 years ago believe in this crap, right? Maybe, maybe you could. But today, honestly, with, with, with the internet, come on, people. It says, Chris Claus, give me the mod. Chris, I will give you lots of advice, and you need it. Uh, Trinity Matrix, uh, thank you so much for your advice. Um, I do need lots of advice, but no, I don't need you to give it to me. Um, so, no, I'm not going to be doing that. Um, I don't give mods to people that ask for them. Um, mods earn them in my book. Uh, the people that I have moderators on my channel have earned uh, their status as mod on my channel, and I trust their decisions. Um, I trust what they say, and they look out for me. Uh, we are brothers and we are sisters in Christ, um, and I think I'm good. I, I think I'm good right now. The, the mod team that I, got, I have, they're, they're pretty stellar, and they're here most of the time. Uh, I, that's one thing I could say about my mods. That there's not, there's never been a time that I've went live that my mods haven't, been, some of them been able to, um, to been able to help. Um, so thank you so much for all the mods that do all the wonderful job out there for me. Now, Eric, is there anything that you wanted to say before I move on? Because I'm going to start finishing off on the logical problem of the Trinity. Well, I I have the that verse on the screen. If you want to look at that again, on Pickthall, it says Moses fell down senseless. He sent it crashing yeah. down, and Moses fell down. So if you have an entire mountain fall down on top of you, I think you're going to fall down a little more than senseless. Now, is this like a, some type of miraculous uh, protection that Allah has provided with Moses? And he look at it, just, him and then protected him. Yeah, he got stoned, and then when he woke, he said, "Glory." Unto thee, unto thee, repentant. Thank you for stoning me. I am the first of true. But this is oh, if it's so it, people. Thank you so much for pulling up that translation. You see in the brackets there at the end of the sentence, he says, "I am the first of the true believers." That must mean that the ones before Moses weren't the true believers. I got it now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Abraham had no idea what he was talking about. Noah, no, nope, no, nope. Adam, ah, no, no, can't have it. Moses, he's got this, and especially yeah. realizes it after a mountain falls on him. That makes all the sense in the world. Sign me up for this. Does so, does so. Now, the last thing I want to say is this: not it's not going to take me too too much longer here. Now, now getting back to the Trinity. So now, what about the Trinity? To me, there is no problem because I don't believe that I would have to conceptualize God within a created diagram to be able to believe that God is one. So if Muslims want to say that I'm appealing to mystery, so be it. I maintain that something that is outside of time and space should not be and is not comparable to that inside of time and space. I also want to point out how Muslims also believe the same thing. It's beyond me why Muslims would use double standards when doing their dawah. Now, I will take, uh, I will not take away from anyone, again, I will not take away from anyone who thinks that they can philosophically describe God. 
Just be sure that someone's idea of God does not make God true nor false. And I want to leave people, I want to leave people with this thought. Quantum physics cannot be understood with metaphysics. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist, nor is illogical either. It means that the metaphysics are wrong and cannot describe it yet. So when it comes to God, if the metaphysics cannot fully describe the being and nature of God, then our metaphysics fit it. metaphysics is wrong and cannot describe God properly. That is my view that metaphysics cannot properly describe the being and the nature of God. So that is my whole idea, my whole stream on, on the logical problem of the Trinity. I don't believe that there is a logical problem of the Trinity. Um, I don't fault theologians uh, for their thought processes this way. But if their thought processes um, try to conceptualize a God for them, then so be it. But I'm okay with having faith that my God that's outside of time and space that created time, space, and matter should not be bound by our knowledge and terms within that creation. Um, and if a Muslim wants to say that I'm appealing to mystery to try to run away from it, so be it. Muslims do the same thing, especially when it comes to the to the oneness of their God. Remember, it's Tawheed, man. It's Tawheed. That's all you get from them. Tawheed, man. It's Tawheed. So, coming to the end of the show, I do want to thank my Lord and Savior again for providing me the ability to be able to have an online ministry. Um, I also want to thank my wife that was into the chat for most of the time. We do have company here, uh, so she's been in and out. Uh, so, she's doing quite a bit again this evening. Um, so I do want to thank my wife and my children for providing me the time. I do have five wonderful children. Of course, one doesn't live with me. She has her own place with a grandchild, uh, with her child, my grandchild, I guess I should say, uh, which I'm going to go pick up tomorrow. So I get to have some grandpa grandson time tomorrow, which I'm pretty happy for. Um, and other than that, I just want to thank all of you out there for all the love and support that you've shown me channel especially with the super chats and the super stickers uh people that are joining the membership here on the channel and joining the patreon memberships as well uh god bless everyone thank you so much for all the support um it is my uh lifelong goal to serve our lord and savior in a full-time ministry um and if that is possible um if i do have a full line full-time ministry i would be going live uh five days a week at least so I, I just want to put that out there that that is my end goal um and so until it happens it happens and it'll happen when god blesses me uh, with the ability to do it and i'm willing to wait until that time happens um so with that being said god bless everybody and i hope to see you within the next couple of days uh before before christmas because i want to do one more stream before christmas god bless you all and have a wonderful night